Hi everyone, uh, we're doing part four now, and this is the last part for chapter three. Uh, I wanna do a correction from part three to begin with. When I referred to Coke and Apple being focused, I meant that they focus their energy on a limited number of products. And that is a bit different than saying that they use a focused niche strategy that I'm gonna talk about in this video, okay? Also, I, didn't, I don't think I quite made it clear in the last video that using a consolidation strategy uh, consolidation strategy has two meanings actually. It is the horizontal method that I talked about in the last video where you're buying your competitors or it's also buying uh, vertical upstream in your supply chain. So I don't think I made that clear in the last video. I want to make that clear. So for this video, our first new topic is what's called the geographic expansion strategy. This is when companies are offering their products and services in new markets. Uh, there are many supply chain issues and HR issues to consider. The, uh, the examples of geographic expansion are virtually every one of the American chains you can think of. Starbucks, McDonald's, Applebee's, all the, all the chains you can think of, they use a geographic expansion strategy. They're trying to um, sell their products in more countries. The new topic in this video is really talking about the different competitive strategies. And so the first type of competitive strategy I'm gonna talk about, first example, is Carrefour. Carrefour tries to sell products at the lowest price possible. And in so doing, they're going to make a tiny profit margin on each item. And so Carrefour is a great example of a cost leadership strategy because quite simply, they are not trying to make a large profit on any one item they sell. So good example of cost leadership strategy. Another example here in all lane uh, is Rashid Ali. And I happen to know that a lot of people here really like Rashid Ali. Rashid Ali sells really cheap sandwiches and they don't make a large profit on any one item, but they sell many, many items. So how do they make a profit? By selling things so cheap? They have a high volume of sales. So both Carrefour and Rashid Ali have a very high volume of sales, but they have a low profit margin on each item. So you have to sell thousands, in the case of Rashid Ali, thousands of sandwiches, or in the case of Carrefour, millions of items in order to make a large profit. Cost leadership. Next up is what's called a differentiation strategy. In a differentiation strategy, products are offered at a higher price, yet they're somehow different. And when I talked about this in class, I said that most shops in the mall, other than Carrefour, are using a differentiation strategy. So how does companies in a differentiation how do companies in a differentiation strategy make a profit? They have slightly higher profit margins on every item they sell, and they have a very large volume of sales. So it's not, um, if you think of center point, if you think of center point, center point in the mall sells almost as many, sorry, sells clothing and, and stuff for you, clothing and other apparel. Carrefour sells all of those same things, but people are willing to pay a higher price to get a little bit higher quality at center point. In class, I asked how many people in here bought their Candoras at Carrefour? Because I know they sell them there. And the answer was nobody bought their Candoras at Carrefour because and I assume the same is true for Abayas. I mentioned that in the female class, but I've never shot for an Abaya ever anywhere. Anyhow, the, the point of differentiation is that people are willing to, for some products, pay a higher price for a higher level of quality. Differentiation. The focus niche strategy. The term, the, the term focus means you're going for a narrow group, and the term niche means that you don't care if 99% of the world 
doesn't want your products. And a great example of this is uh, me collecting all of my Coke stuff. So as you can see here, this is uh, pot roast that I made a week or so ago. And it's on a Coca-Cola plate, on a Coca-Cola placemat, with a Coca-Cola fork, with a Coca-Cola knife, with a Coca-Cola napkin, uh, a Coca-Cola can there, and of course, a Coca-Cola glass. So 99% of the people in the world would not care about having a Coca-Cola plate or Coca-Cola fork. I do. It's, it's, it's something that's important to me. So this is so there are a couple stores in America that sell nothing but Coca-Cola items. This is exactly the example of a focused niche strategy. Another example is from a student who was here last year. Theo is an exchange student in the spring of 2019. Uh, he was, he's also one of the best sales associates at Louis Vuitton. And I had the opportunity to go visit him in Louis Vuitton last summer. And I, I, I will make a video of this, I promise. I just need time to do it. Um, but Louis Vuitton is an example of a focused niche strategy. They sell their products at such a super high price that 99% of the people in the world aren't going to buy things at Louis Vuitton. It's not, it is not for the majority of people in the world. I think that handbag that, that Theo is holding there, I think that bag, it's an alligator bag, or yeah, anyhow, I'm pretty sure that went for 25,000 euros, which would be 100,000 dirhams, over 100,000 dirhams. So yeah, pr pretty, pretty expensive bag there. So how do focus niche companies make a profit? They have a much higher profit margin on every item they sell, but they're going to sell much fewer, okay? On the example of the bag up here, uh, Theo is one of the best salespeople at the Louis Vuitton in Paris, and yet he only sells maybe two or three of these bags in a month. So that's, that's very low volume sales, but super high profit margin that they have on those. So some other terms you need to know to finish out this chapter. Uh, in class, I talked about leveraging. If you hear the word leverage in the world of business, if you hear the word leverage, right here, if you hear the word leverage, honestly, think debt. Because what leverage is doing is it is companies that are borrowing money so that they can grow faster. The term metrics, uh, in the first couple of weeks of our online classes, I talked about metrics pretty much every day. And I talked about it that metrics is how something is measured. And so the example I gave was how the university is measuring whether their teachers, whether their instructors and professors like me are actually doing their classes. And so one of the ways they're doing it is monitoring whether or not we're recording our classes. So that's a metric. They're, they're, they're finding something to measure and they're measuring it. Um, I gave other examples when we were in class but you don't need to, there won't be any test question on those or that for them either, okay. Strategic control. The word control, when you were in management class, you learned that control means to monitor, to watch, and to make changes if necessary. The same thing is true for the term strategic control. Strategic control is just overall how top management is able to monitor performance and to make changes if necessary. And then last but not least, the term value chain. chain. Value chain is very similar to the term supply chain. It's, sometimes the words are actually used interchangeably. Value chain means every step in a process has to add value or you should get rid of it. So uh, in class, I, I believe I gave the example that when I was a child, the, the box that deodorant came with, the thing you buy to make sure you don't smell when you sweat, that, that it used to come in a box that was twice the size of the actual deodorant. So 
what I'm talking about here, because I just want to make it clear, what I'm talking about when I say deodorant, I don't know if you can see this in the light, whatever, it's just, it's literally what you put under your arms so you don't smell, uh, which I hope um, most of you use. Anyhow, the box, when I, was a, when I was a child, it came in a box that was twice the size of, of this. And so it was Walmart in America, the equivalent of car four that we have here in the UAE, it was Walmart in America that said, you know, we're only gonna sell your brand if you get rid of the big box. They didn't like the big box that these came in because it took up more shelf space, it, it took up more space in the trucks that brought the deodorant to it. And so they said, we want you to get rid of this. And, uh, and the companies, because Walmart was, it, well, Walmart, I believe, still is the largest retailer in the world, the companies realized, oh, maybe that's a good idea. And so they got rid of it. The other example of where value chain comes into play that I used from class was the fact that 20 years ago, if you bought a computer, it would come in, first of all, computers are much bigger, but it would also come in giant boxes and, and so forth. Uh, it just did. Now, when you buy something, it comes in very minimalist boxing. And so it's no longer, it's no longer considered cool to have stuff inside your box, computer box, phone box, whatever, that are not necessary anymore. And so this is, this is the idea of value chain, that everything you do, everything you give to your customers needs to add value. And if it doesn't add value, you should eliminate it. So that, I believe, finishes chapter three. I hope this was interesting. And I hope I can stop here. Take care.